All right, now this is the moment, of course, that we've all been waiting for, and that's our next guest. He's certainly not shy about where gold is going. In fact, just last week, he said this on Futures Now. They can certainly make a move back up to 17, 1800. When the world figures out the position that we're in, I mean, it's, it's, it's the gold that's going to the moon, not the stock market. Somebody was talking about the stock market going to the moon. Uh, it's more likely gold. It's going to the moon. So how does Peter Schiff feel about it now? And is he ready to wave the white towel? Euro Pacific's Peter Schiff joins us on the Futures phone. Peter, let me preface this question by saying I love having you on the show. You are one of my favorite guests. But every time you come on, you make the case that gold prices are going higher, as we just heard. And so far, you really have not been right. You've been incorrect. So what I want to know from you today is really what are you telling people that you've convinced to buy gold when it's roughly off 30 percent from its high? All right. Well, again, put it in perspective. I've been doing this for 12 years. Gold was below 300 when I started. So it's not like I just started buying gold two years ago. Uh, so it, and I do believe that gold prices are going up. Here's what's happening right now. People are jumping to the wrong conclusion. They think the Fed is going to tighten. They're not. In fact, the next move from the Fed is to expand QE. They're not going to taper it. The U.S. economy is going back into recession, right? The phony recovery that the Fed created is evaporating before its eyes. Interest rates are rising. I've also been telling you that bond prices are going to fall. They're falling. Interest rates are rising. They're going to keep on rising. We could be at a 4% 10-year, uh, maybe even by the end of the summer. Uh, are headed over 5%. It means housing prices are headed back down. We're going to make new lows in the housing market. The unemployment rate is headed back above 8% before the Fed even begins to taper, which means the Fed is going to call it off. The Fed is going to have to wave the right white flag, not me. They're going to have to admit that it hasn't worked, and they're going to up the size of QE. Meanwhile, the gold traders are preparing for something that's not going to happen, and they're going to be caught by surprise, and you're going to see a vicious rally in gold as people look to rebuy the gold that they sold based on the false premise that the economy was improving and the Fed was going to tighten. Well, that's interesting, Peter, because certainly a lot of interpretation on Bernanke's comments yesterday. Everybody is trying to sort of really read into them. I haven't necessarily heard that we're going to see an expansion of QE. Um, but in the meantime, I want to shift gears for a second. Said. Sorry? What ben Bernanke said if the economy doesn't recover the way he believes, and of course he's normally wrong when he makes a forecast, he said that he's going to increase the size of the QE, and that is what he is going to do. He, he's pretending that there's a real recovery, but there's not. The whole, all the proof of recovery is that stock prices went up and that real estate prices went up, but they're all going to go down. The stock market's going to keep on falling until the Fed cries uncle, and the real estate market is rolling over. You're going to have all sorts of sellers now. All the speculative buyers in the real estate market are going to turn into sellers. And all the foreclosures are now being moved forward. The banks are foreclosing more on properties. There's going to be lots of sellers. There's going to be no buyers. And the prices are going to go back down, and so will the economy. But, Peter, isn't that good for the dollar if that happens? And if so, then that's going to have an impact on gold as well. It's going to send it lower. Well, no, it's going to be terrible for the dollar. And meanwhile, the dollar is not really wrong. It's up a little bit over the last couple of days, but it's no higher than it was last week. And what this is going to do is expose the phony nature of this recovery and let people know that it really is QE infinity, that there is no way for the Fed to stop the QE because QE is the economy. Without the QE, the economy implodes. You know, Ben Bernanke says that, you know, he's going to, he's going to take his foot off the gas, but he's not going to step on the brake. Well, he's going to have to push his foot on the gas even harder. But the problem is he's driving the car over the edge of a cliff because that's what happens if we never stop the QE. But if we stop it, we're right back in a worse recession than we were in in 2008 uh, when the Fed began this crazy experiment. When people, again, as I said the last time on the show, when the world figures out what I'm already trying to explain to you right now, they're going to be buying gold as fast as they can, not selling it. But what if Bernanke happens to be right and you happen to be wrong here? If the data does improve substantially and he does pull back a little bit, then what well, happens to gold, well, Peter? That would be unprecedented for Ben Bernanke to be right. I mean, I think I have a much better track record than he does. But think about it this way. The only thing that propped up the housing market was 
low mortgage rates and speculative buying. That's what's going on. Mortgage rates are rising probably the fastest they've ever risen in history. Take a look at your quote screen. Look at the 30-year. Look at the 10-year. And there is no chart support. You know, we're at 2.445 right now on a 10-year. We could be at 2.8 by next week. We can crack through 3%. If the Fed doesn't come in and say uncle, it is a crash in the bond market. It is the bursting of the biggest bubble in, in, in the world. And that's going to take down the real estate market. It's going to take down the stock market. And all this consumer confidence that was the result of all this wealth is going to go away. Meanwhile, consumers took on even more debt because the Fed convinced them uh, that they were richer. The fact is they're poor, and now they have to pay back the money they borrowed, and the cost of doing that is going up. The whole refinancing business has grinded to a halt now. Banks are going to be laying off a lot of people because nobody can refinance their mortgage anymore. All right, a lot to unpack in there. want to send it out to Jim for a second. Jim, a question for Peter. Yep. Yes, Peter, when you talk about everyone's going to flock into gold when the dollar collapses, here's what I can't get my head around that you could help me with. Why would real estate necessarily implode then, too? Might there be a look for tangible assets as well if they want to store their money away from dollars and into things? I don't get that part. Well, first of all, look at REITs are already collapsing. Look at the home builders. They're down as much as the gold stock. And they got a lot of to by the way. Real estate is a function of leverage. It's a function of the ability to borrow money to buy it. And the only reason that people are buying real estate is because they can borrow the money real cheap. So just like bonds go down when interest rates go up, real estate prices, only real estate prices are probably even more affected by the cost of financing. Most Americans, but when they Peter, buy a house, but Peter, back it's just to your a point. down payment. I when mean, you're it's talking a about, mortgage payment. Peter, when you're talking about gold, you're talking over a long-term horizon. When you're talking about the dollar, you're saying you're looking really far back into history. When you're talking about rates, it's really the same thing. Even though rates are rising, relatively, they're not that high. No, but they're high when you know, you've got prices for houses that are where they are right now. They need those low rates. The country is broke, and you have to look at the percentage they're increasing. Yes, they're still low, but they're not nearly as low as they were. We had mortgage rates at three and a quarter. That's what it took to lift the market uh, you know, out of the bottom. But when rates are 5% or 6% again, which they're going to be they'll, by the end of the year if the Fed doesn't reverse course, People cannot afford to buy houses. But they will be uh, able to uh, afford to buy houses if the economy is actually improving and everybody's doing no, a little but bit the better. the economy is not improving. The only thing that's happening is the stock market went up and the real estate market went up despite the fact that the economy is not improving. We're not creating any jobs. We're still destroying jobs. The labor force is shrinking. People are going from paychecks to disability checks. You know, you, the, uh, the savings rate has collapsed. People are broke. They're barely keeping their heads above economic water. The only thing they got going is the illusion that things are getting better because of all the Fed stimulus. But that illusion is wearing off. I mean, it's wearing off before the Fed even dials it back. That's how addicted we are to we, even if you talk about the possibility of slightly tapering it back next year, that's more than the markets can handle. All right, Peter Schiff, always a colorful conversation when you're on. Thank you so much for joining us today. Anytime.